All right, we're ready to begin lesson eight. So lesson eight, I'm a little bit nervous about because we have what for some is a difficult letter because it makes the sound that we don't have in English. But we're going to work our way through it. So let's go to our new letters. And this is the letter Chet. Chet. And it says C-H as in Hanukkah. And that's a little difficult because some people don't pronounce Hanukkah with the het. Some people pronounce Hanukkah with uh, an H sound, which in Hebrew, an H was, we know is a hey. Um, het uh, is a guttural. I've seen it taught as het as in Johann Sebastian Bach. That kind of sound that you make at the back of your throat. It's a guttural from the back of the throat. Uh, some people overemphasize the guttural and they're like like that. And and I and sometimes we're making fun and we'll say certain things and we'll kind of overdo the guttural, but it's it's just a slight guttural, like Johann Sebastian Bach, um, uh, Hanukkah, um, the braided bread that we eat at Shabbat called challah. And a lot of times, um, and when people transliterate um, a, a het into English, they use a ch, and that's why people who are not familiar with Hebrew will sometimes look at transliterated words and they'll pronounce it a ch with the English like ch, like in church. Um, and Hebrew does not have a, that ch sound; it doesn't have a ch sound. It, when you see ch with Hebrew, it's only guttural. Um, and that's why some people will do an H with a dot underneath it to show that it's guttural, that it's a het. Um, and then, uh, but I find most people do the CH, but it's, it's CH like Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach, or Hanukkah, um, the Hebrew name, um, uh, which in English sounds like Hannah, is uh, Hannah. And so it's just a guttural from the back. Um, I also, I've, I've taught people when they're trying to understand het, because there are two gutturals in Hebrew, in the Hebrew Aleph Beit, and we haven't gotten to the other one yet. That I teach that het is the, um, sorry, het is the guttural um, H. So, and the reason I'm saying that is because another letter um, will be a guttural K. And some people pronounce them exactly the same. They're slightly different. Uh, the way I was taught them is that they were slightly different. But um, think of it as a guttural um, H sound. And uh, a het looks like a hay, except a hay has um, a spot right here. Some people will say hay has a hole and het does not. Okay, so het as in Hanukkah. And then we have lamed, and lamed makes an L sound, la, la, lamed. And then they have a tav without a dot is the same as a top with a dot. This dot is called a dagesh. And you've noticed that in other letters like bait um, has a dagesh. Up here we have a bait. You see the dot, that's a dagesh. Um, and the reason they're saying it's the same, if you're in an Ashkenazic context, older people they differentiate the sound. Uh, if you go to an Orthodox synagogue that's predominantly made up of Ashkenazic Jews, my understanding is most of them still use the Ashkenazic pronunciation. And for them, this would not be true. This with a dagesh makes a T sound from Tav. This without a dagesh does not make a T sound. It makes an S sound. And so they differentiate between these two letters. So if you're trying to learn Yiddish, for instance, then you would need to know that because that's, that applies there as well. Um, and if you're wanting to pray in an Ashkenazic context um, uh, and use that, then you'll you'll need to know that particular rule. And even if you you're like me and you've I learned Sephardic pronunciation first, the first thing I noticed when being around older Ashkenazic Jews was that they they revert back to the way they were taught, and a lot of them were not taught that a tav with a dagesh and a tav without a dagesh make the same sound. In fact, like I like we mentioned in lesson one. This is called a tav, um, but this without the dagesh, Ashkenazic Jews call it a sav to reflect that it makes an S sound for them. So that's just something to be aware of. Now let's look at our key word. Okay, we have our guttural, cha, that's the first syllable, and la. So together, chala. Chala is the braided bread for Shabbat. It's braided round like this for Rosh Hashanah, the new year in the fall. 
Um, two loaves are braided together for Shabbat. You braid it like that, and that's what it looks like. And I braided bread uh, last night, getting ready for Shabbat. We do that every week, and you can also sometimes find it in stores. And just like it's transliterated with the CH, uh, I've been places where people actually know how to make it, but they don't know how to say it. And they'll say, uh, you, you ask them, you know, do you have challah? And they kind of look at you funny. And then they'll say, oh, chala bread, chala, uh, it's because of the transliteration issues. But remember, when it's transliterated from Hebrew to English with the CH, it's guttural. It's never, it's never the chest sound. It's always ch, like hate. Okay. So let's look at our story. Sorry. On Shabbat and holidays, the challah is blessed after Kiddush is said. It is a custom to keep the challah covered until we recite the blessing over the wine. Why? So that the challah will not feel bad that we are saying the blessing for the yayin first. If we care for the feelings of an object, how much more should we care about the feelings of family, friends, and guests? Okay, so let's move into our first little lesson here. Okay, what you want to be aware of, remember, is that chet has a different, is a different than an hay. And I don't see any hays on this page, so they're not trying to trick us yet. Okay, one, chash, ach, chag, pach, cham. All right, two, chush, Achar, Chug, Pachad, Chum. All right, three. Nachush, Achim, Yagug. Let me do that one again, sorry. Yachug, Parach, Rachum. All right, four. Takum. Lakum, Talush, Talul, Latsum. All right, five. Chalul, Lach, um, sorry, Lachut, Lachush, Machul, Chalud. Let me scroll down a bit. Sorry. All right, six. Okay. Chatzitza. All right, see there we have a hay and we have a chet. The chet is fully connected, the hay is not. So chatzitza, chatima, uh, sorry, uh, chakira. Chaluka, Chaluda, Tapuchim, Chatira, Chamimut, Chagiga, Chamitza. Okay, I've noticed, um, and I, I sometimes mess up trying to go a little slow so that I can really uh, enunciate. And I've, I've noticed when teaching this, some people have a struggle when the, when the chet is at the beginning of a word, but not so much when it's in the middle or towards the end. And the main thing to do is just practice, listen to those who know what they're saying. And, and once you learn a word that has a chet, wherever you're struggling with it at, that has a chet in it, if you're struggling where the chet is at the beginning, um, once you learn a word uh, and you're able to say that particular word, then it gets a little easier. But it's one of those things, it's just with practice. We don't have that in English language. I find that kids can pick it up a little quicker uh, than adults. And I know a lot of people who will be working through this will be adults. And, and that's just one of those things that if you're in your 50s or 60s, you've, you've learned English, you, you, you're not used to necessarily um, a guttural. And just you, it's just practice. That's just one of those things. It's practice. Okay, our cool Hebrew words. Uh, chayim, which is life. And uh, chupa, which is a wedding canopy. So maybe I uh, think of uh, lachayim as a, as a common toast. And there, that would actually combine our lamed and our chayt together. Uh, lachayim, uh, to life. 
Uh, it's a common uh, Jewish Hebrew toast. Okay, and now we have um, new vocabulary. Ata means you, masculine. Okay, we're going to kind of get into this now that that Hebrew is a, a language like many languages that is gendered. There are masculine forms and feminine forms, and uh, we're going to start getting a little bit used to that with some conversation. So ata means you speaking to a man. If I'm a guy talking to another guy, I would say ata, you. If I'm a woman talking to a guy, I would still say ata, you, because it's who you're speaking to. And later on, we'll start getting into some feminine forms as well. But right now, this is only masculine. Um, it says fill in the blanks with ani, which means I or my, or I am, ata, you speaking to a man, or me, who is. So we have here, mi ata, she's speaking, who, who, who are you? And he says, ani, and then there's his name, nahum, I am nahum, like the, uh, like the prophet nahum or nahum. Okay. Scroll down. All right, two. Me, she's talking to him. What would she say? She would say, Mi ata, who are you? He says, Ani Chaim, I am Chaim. Chaim means life, but it's also a name. Then he says, Mi ata, to the older man. Mi ata, who are you? And he says, Ani Uri. His name is Uri. Okay, so what would the boy here say? He would say, he would say, Miata, who are you? And he would answer, I need Dani, I am Danny. Okay, and scroll down. The girl talking to the guy, she would say, Miata, who are you? He would say, I need Adam, I am Adam. Um, so that could be something you practice with. Uh, you could say, um, Ani, I am, whether you're male or female, that the Ani is the same. So you could say, Ani, and practice what's your name. Maybe, uh, you know, if you have an English name or a Spanish name or, or whatever name you have, if you have a Jewish name or a Hebrew name, um, if you're not Jewish, but you can uh, you can get books that would show the Hebrew equivalent of your name and you want to use that or you could use your English name and just practice saying Ani, you know, I am uh, whatever. You know, I have a Hebrew name, an English name, and I would say that uh, Ani Chris, Ani Ari Ben Hadar. Um, just, just some basic, uh, Hebrew like that. Okay. And we go here, we have new vocabulary. That's one of the reasons we kind of slow down. We get a little bit more and more vocabulary. So we have Tachat, which is under, and it says, write the letter next to the matching question and answer. So I would practice, if I'm doing this with a student, I'd practice reading this out loud and answering it. So question one says, ma, remember ma means what is, tachat, under, hayad, the hand. So try to practice it like you would say an actual sentence, uh, like an actual question. Ma tachat hayad, what's under the hand? Dog tachat hayad, a fish is under the hand. So which picture has that? Uh, gimel, so we'd put gimel there. Two, matachat ha what's under the Haggadah? Matzatachat ha hagada. so that would be Dalit. Okay, three, matachat hagir, what's under the chalk? Yatachat hagir, the hand is under the chalk, so that would be hey. All right, four. Mi bayamim, who is in the water? And then the answer is Abba, ba, uh, uh, sorry, Abba by, uh, sorry, Abba by mayim, father is in the water, and that's bait. And then five says, Matakat hachala, what's under the chala? Yatakat hachala, a hand is under the chala. And that would be Aleph. Okay, now we have a lesson. We have a new vocabulary again. We have chatul, which is cat. 
And we have a little story here, a wedding, a chatuna, that's a wedding. So chatul is cat, chatuna is a wedding. And real quick, just thinking about cat, um, a free thing, now that you're actually learning some Hebrew letters, there's a, there's a little app that you can get. You can get it from many languages uh, for free. Um, I believe it's for free. If, if it's not free, it's like really cheap. And it's called uh, Gus on the Go. And you can get it for different languages. You can get it for Spanish, for Hindi, for all sorts of things. And they have it for Hebrew. And there are games where you learn the names of animals. And the pronunciation that you'll hear is an Israeli pronunciation. Um, there are certain, there's a Nikud that we're going to get to that's not always uttered by Israelis with their particular accent. And you'll hear the sounds of an Israeli saying these things. And there's one with animals. So there's Khatul, the cat, uh, Kelev, dog. Um, you have um, uh, Zeus, horse. Um, sorry, Zeus, not Zeus. Zeus, horse. Uh, you have uh, all these different things. And so now that you're actually learning Hebrew letters, that's a really good app to have. And you'll learn like colors and how to say um, uh, pants and shoes and socks. And you'll learn animals and um, names of fruits and vegetables in Hebrew. And it'll be written with Hebrew letters. And you click on it and you'll hear an Israeli pronouncing it. And that's just something good to have. And it'll help you with some of these terms. If you're struggling with um, a chet, that's when we got to this lesson and my mother was kind of struggling. I said, oh, yeah, Gus on the go because you have chatu. And then you'll see feminine uh, version of a cat, chatula, and you'll get used to hearing that those sounds. Okay, so once again, chatul is cat, and then chatuna uh, uh, is a wedding. Okay, and remember Hebrew is read left, uh, sorry, right from left. So we start over here on this side. We don't start here, we start here. So chatul, cat, chatula. Feminine cat. Ah, go down, sorry. Arik Hatul. Arik, that's his name. Hatul. Arik is a cat. Khana Hatula. Khana is a fem is a female cat. Arik uh, Arik Tahat Kupa. Arik Tahat, he's under. Chupa, the chupa, the wedding canopy. Chana takat chupa. Chana is underneath the chupa, the wedding canopy. Okay, we have a hey before a chet, so that's always kind of throws us English speakers off. Chakatuna, sorry, let's try that again. Chakatuna, that's better. Chakatuna, so the wedding... Arik Rabbi Chana. The wedding, Eric, Arik or Eric, the rabbi, and Chana. Okay. You might get discouraged by this point. There's a lot more conversation. The letters are getting a little more difficult because there are letters that have sounds that we don't have in English. So after this lesson is complete, go back and do it on your own. It's really important to practice this particular lesson because I feel that this is where people start getting a little bit more discouraged. So go back and practice it on your own, but don't stop. If you know what a chet is, if you know what a lamet is, um, then, and you've never really interacted with Hebrew before, move on to the next lesson. If you know the sounds that they make, even if you're still struggling with them, at some point move on, but practice at least one time, if not twice, with this particular lesson before moving on. But then once you've done it, even if you struggle, if you if you struggle through the practice and you're like, well, I've practiced a couple times, I'm still struggling, then okay, do you know what a chet is? Do you know what a lamet is? If so, move on to the next lesson. Okay. All right, prepare for prayer again. Remember, these are all actual words in Hebrew, or terms in Hebrew that are used in the prayer book. So if you're interested in translation, maybe work through, work your way through some of these. All right, uh, one, li, la, lanu, libi, libam. Two, shachar, achar, Zachar, Bachar, Machar. Three, Mitzil, 
ומציל מצילה הצלה הציל יחד, יחיד, יחוד. גילה, גלוי, בגלוי, גילו, uh, גילויים. Let me try that again, I apologize. גילויים. So notice, you got גי, then you have לו as a syllable, Then we have our Yud with a Chirik underneath it. So this is attached to this Chirik, but this is over it. So we're going to make the Y sound here, and this gets absorbed into the Chirik. So Giluyim, Giluyim. All right. Gilulim, six. Cham, Chama, Chum, Chamum. Chimum. Sorry, I think I kind of messed up my pronunciation. Let's do this one again. Chimum. So, sorry. Chimum. I was right the first time. Chimum. So this would be a syllable. Chi. And then mem. Um, nikud, mem would be one syllable together. So it would be the second syllable. Sorry for my dog. Chimum. All right, seven. Rachaman, Harachaman, Rachum, Harachum, Rachamim. And so the Hebrew words for compassion would be Rachamim. And the merciful one, speaking about God in this context, Harachaman. Okay. And... That is it for lesson eight. Okay, once again, go back through lesson eight before you move on to lesson nine. I would even maybe try it twice because I just lesson eight is a difficult one. But once you know the letters and once you can decode, even if you kind of struggle with, with, with saying it out loud, you're going to have further practice as you go on. Once you know the letters, move on to, to number nine. But don't move on to number nine before you've uh, had time to at least practice one run through of that. Go through the conversation. I know a lot of people don't like the conversation when they're just learning Hebrew. It makes them feel like they're going at a slower pace. It's slowing down a bit, but the main thing is if you're still if you're still struggling with decoding and reading out loud and you find you're hesitating and it's not quite reaching your mouth, uh, you know, because a lot of people say, I can hear it in my head, but I just can't quite get it out. That's okay. It just means more practice. But once you know the letters, move on. The idea is to learn the Aleph Beit and the sounds of the Nikudim and to get used to some decoding. And once you've gotten through that, then you can practice your decoding and getting quicker at it. Okay, that's it for today.